Listen, I need everybody information. This is crucial. We just got some critical updates. We have been presented with some new fate samurai information. And you know that means we gotta rise up to the occasion. Now, there's a lot of footage that's been coming out as of late. People are getting the game early. There's a demo for the select few. And what we're seeing is a lot of old scenes get revisited, but with greater detail. New scenes, new dialogue, the whole nine. Initially, you have a start off with Iori being chased down by this league of ninjas. They always show up alongside Ryder. Since we know Ryder is with Yui, it appears that these are the same guys from the academy just concealing their identity. At least that's the way it looks. So he's completely by himself because this is before he summons his servant. And he's fending off all these guys at once. Clears everybody out the way and then he finally has to face up against Ryder. And Ryder just jumps insanely high into the sky. No preparation coming all the way down from the moon and just slams down on Iori and he fends it off I really want to get more in depth with the reason that he's able to hold his own against a servant because just watching it it looks so wild and you can see just this one hit from Ryder has put multiple cracks all over the ground by this point we realize that Ryder is already familiar with Iori more than likely via somebody else whoever they are they're hunting him down and it comes comes off as Iori being in the way. Iori on the other hand has no idea what's going on at all. I'm noticing that the shoulder guards around Ryder aren't even attached to the body. They just float to the side. You can hear this voice modifier that's layered on top of Ryder's voice to try to switch it up and throw the person off. You know initially I was one of the ones that said I would have preferred to it not being Raiko just because I want somebody fresh even though I love Raiko but at the same time i'm not delusional pretty much everything is starting to point to it being raiko between the way that the rider fights concealing the voice the lightning the armor the girl that we saw in the other trailer that looks exactly like rider same gear everything but again we just gotta wait and see either way and as you saw in the thumbnail iori ain't scared he's not backing down he says i'm taking on people servants bosses it does not matter so for the format of the way that rider fights they have this purple aura that surrounds their entire sword it looks really cool and then the sword itself is gigantic that matches it goes along with them they have quite a bit of moves you can see they can throw energy waves from the sword they're extremely fast when they're not just standing still they can straight up teleport if they need to that alone is a lot of things that Iori has to deal with at once especially considering that this is one of the first characters that he goes up against they have this distinct force field that they can use which appears to be in invoked by the sword it looks like this is what we saw in the trailer before with the figure that appeared to be going against assassin when they invoke the sword you can see these strips kind of fly around their body and then the entire screen just goes purple lightning shoots up in the background and it has some link to it too it's not like it's an instant thing they kind of hold on to it again you have the same clashes that iori was doing from before and he's going in i gotta give it to him but though he has the skill the sheer strength of Ryder is proving to be too much for him especially considering that it's a servant and he has no backup so you got Ryder pull up to Iori and hits him with multiple slashes he actually deflects all of them but all the power behind it leads into Ryder disarming him of both his swords so now I'm not gonna make the joke but you know the joke now he's in that state where he's vulnerable and as you can see he's getting tired he's panting and Ryder looks like they haven't dropped the sweat but what is this oh my bad i was just playing bro had a whole handful of gems that he used to disengage from Ryder. very tactful play on his part and it really worked it blew him out of the way though he did take some damage from it it was better than getting beheaded like it appears that Ryder was about to do to him and that separation is good for him because at this point Ryder's master comes in to intervene which is yui one thing i noticed about yui is that they do have a female Female voice actor so Yui has in fact been gender bent or they're going for something different with their character you hear Ryder call Yui their liege which at the very 
very least lets us know that they do have some type of compatibility it's not a relationship where they hate each other or you know they kind of dislike each other and they're not moving with the same motives it seems like they're really in tune in terms of what they want so you have yui pull out one of her swords and they actually address iori as a lord so she's also familiar with iori pulls up to behead him says that she's gonna take his life and this will be the first time that he summons saber and that's the scene that you more than likely come across before you can see their summon with phantasm in hand and saber is on go so now luckily my man isn't by himself anymore he's got a little backup to make things easier so they've completely separated from yui and Ryder, and they're back fighting the ninjas again saber still doesn't reveal himself yet and you can see that iori is using the spells and this goes back into what saber was saying in his profile about iori being obsessed with his swordsmanship the first time that he sees iori use his spells he's like oh this is way better than relying on your swords you should do more of that and you can tell just from iori's silence that he takes offense to this because just earlier in the footage he was practicing his swordsmanship like he really takes that to heart so for him to say that the spells are more efficient probably hits him in his core so for the spells iori actually has multiple stances that correspond with the different elements he's got water he's got fire he's got an earth stance and this makes a lot of sense considering him following the principles of musashi you know musashi studied the same thing the four elements and then of course the void so now i'm wondering is a part of his progression going to be when he possibly finally learns the void is that going to be a part of his kit or is it going to be some type of ascension that he gets later on in the story but on on Saber's behalf, it was less of an insult and more so of spells are just more reliable because they're quicker. You can hit multiple people at once and you don't have to actually run up to them and put yourself in harm's way. And Iori even admits that the spells aren't really his specialty. He just has them just in case. So you have Ryder show back up after they defeat enough ninjas and I'm looking at their sword. Bro, that sword has to be about four or five feet long. It reminds me so much of Sasuke's great sword the Odachi which is crazy because whoever it is is wielding it with one hand and they're just leaving the other hand open just imagine if they use the left hand for something else so now that Iori has backup we get a little tag team action both of them beating up Ryder as much as they possibly can and Saber ain't holding back either he's going head up with Ryder they're about to clash and then all of a sudden who do we have here to ruin the fun it's your girl Jalter and going back into Ryder's speed the moment that they got cut off by Jalter's attacks they immediately started dashing straight towards her and hit her with a crazy energy wave yo the destructive power on this is ridiculous and she just ate it and you can see her master Chiaimon is coming out in the background with her and they're just walking in like they're about to enter a cage match and I thought this was hilarious because the whole point was to harm her but all it really did was turn this into a WWE entrance you got the flames off to the side they're walking in super slow and menacingly actually hilarious so you see you have Jalta here with her two spears and I saw the footage of her fighting earlier my goodness was she in the wrong class all along it's funny because Joan isn't even really supposed to be a fighter so to see Jalta go in like this is wild we still don't know who this is I'm seeing a lot of theories on whether or not it's the real Jalta Jalter, if it's an imposter, if it's Joan pretending to be Jalter, maybe she's doing the ruler stick like they did back in Apocrypha. You know, there's speculation to Gil being ruler class, so that will make a lot of sense in that right to have two rulers in this war, considering that all these different things are going on that shouldn't be. And then, of course, you got Saber giving her some bite back. He tells her straight up, if she wants to leave here alive, she best hit the road right now. But Jalter isn't concerned she's going head up with Saber so you can see that Saber's phantasm is focusing on a lot of water based attacks you know we just went over that the high probability of it being Kusanagi he's got water strikes water summons pretty much everything around it is based in that element he even has his own water blast where he turns the sword into an actual gun itself Yori's in the back looking at the fight he's worrying about Asakusa being in jeopardy because they're burning up the place 
face just by fighting. They take the fight up to the rooftops and you can really see that this showcases a greater level of speed. You can actually see them flash stepping, speed blitzing in the background, teleporting. They're really just moving that fast. Really appreciate that attention to detail. I feel like people often believe that fate servants aren't as fast as they really are. Even the slow servants are fast to somebody that would come from another verse. You got Jalter back flipping and creating some distance. She shoots him with an energy wave all the way across the buildings to hit him on the other rooftop. He deflects it. I'm gonna be honest, man, everything's on fire. This area is done. You might as well stick a fork in it. She's just barbecuing everything. You can see that she's applying a lot of pressure on him. Even mid air, she's going in against this man with both of her spears. It's really wild to see Jalter fighting on this level. And you know, it's funny because Jalter has never been a weak servant. Even from the time of her introduction, she's always been showcased to be an extremely powerful servant. It's just to see it in action, it feels so long overdue, especially with things like the summer event and Shinjuku. It really feels like we've been missing out, but I don't think she was ever supposed to be this good dual handed. That begins to raise some questions. Another thing I keep noticing and I can't help but draw attention to it is her demeanor. We know that Jalter is a pretty brash and outspoken person. That's kind of what she was rooted in. You know, she wasn't educated. I will admit that after becoming more acquainted with her through the story, she did simmer down a bit, but she's still the same old Jalter. So to see the way that she acts here by comparison, it almost feels like a different person. It feels a lot more Jonish even. And that may be why a lot of people are saying it could be her. It just comes off odd to see Jalter being so reserved. So with Saber realizing that Jalter has no intentions on backing down, he's wrapping his sword in his water element and he's actually about to unleash at least some form of his phantasm. You can see the sword completely changes. And this is another thing that I brought up in the other trailer. I said his sword didn't exactly look like Kusanagi at first, but that's not to say that it couldn't change and have some type of variations. And in this, we get exactly that. And now you can see that his sword looks exactly like what Ibuki Doji was wielding in her phantasm, or at least the closest thing to it. You can see the wave surrounding him as he's gathering up this energy. The sword actually expands in size because it definitely was a lot smaller when he first brought it out. Iori starts to realize that when you consider the destructive power on the sword, it really wouldn't be smart to release the phantasm in the way that Saber is about to. So he tries to use a command spell in a very Shiro-esque fashion. It's a lot like that. He uses his command spell and he's able to divert the blast. He doesn't stop him, but he does knock it off course, which is insane to consider. Even though it was off course, you can still see that it did a ton of damage and it blew Jalter all the way across the field. It completely destroys the building that she was in front of. Even while she's trying to hold herself into the ground with her spears, still couldn't hold her in place. And you can see just how much energy that took out of Saber considering how exhausted he looks. So though Chie Mon didn't get involved here, him and Jalter start to leave, Ryder and Yui start to leave, and Yui even makes a threat saying the next time you're finished for sure. You got Saber asking Iori why did he stop him and he's telling him look around you're about to destroy the entire town don't do that again literally. You can see that he's taking a lot of responsibility for what's going on even though majority of this is completely out of his control it's at least admirable that he's trying to minimize the damage but i will admit that just like i say about saber and her righteousness you got to be careful where and when to display that everything in life is about balance a little too much righteousness and all of a sudden you're in a situation where you won't have any righteousness to give because you done got packed up but i like that he's at least level-headed i'm also noticing that even though it gives the impression that Iori actually invoked one of his command spells, he still has all of them on his hand. So there's something else going on when he does that. We switch over to a scene with Yui and you can see that she has some type of association with Yasuhiro, the supposed descendant of Seimei. And he's kind of in a position where he's scolding her for allowing us to escape. And you have Ryder admitting that they would rather get rid of Iori and Saber while they don't know anything more of an ignorance 
Travis is blessed by than for him to find out what's actually going on and have to deal with it later. Ryder looks as taking us out early as an act of mercy and Yui really had no intentions of going that far until she found out if he was truly a master. Now that she knows, the gloves are off. And this is funny too, one thing that Yui brings up is taking down people that's unaware goes against her code. And Yasuhiro mentions exactly what I just said before, be careful or your honor might prove to be your own undoing. Literally what I just said. But again, this is coming from the supposed conspirator. So that might not be such a great thing at the same time. Then you got the scene with Jalter and Chiemon meeting up with Yui and her servant in a passageway. And we later find out that Chiemon actually knows Yui already. They have mutuals. And although he knows her, she has no idea how, but she should be aware of him considering the Shima Bar background. And then you got the scene, if you've seen my Twitter, I posted this on there, of the OG Musashi. We got a close up. It's not like the one we had before. It's actually a flashback of Iori and his sister and they're all together having a talk. My guy Musashi. It even goes back into his former life and you can see him dual wielding his swords in the middle of combat, being the only one with his Nitin Ichiryu style. It does a lot of focusing on his writing. Musashi was real heavy on the philosophy and the spiritual side of life in general. And he's trying to hammer down the fact to Yori that the Nitin style isn't just the sword play, it's the spirituality that goes along with it that makes it whole. But ultimately he has a lot of faith in Yori and he knows that he's unique enough to know the difference or at least find a way that the style will work out for him eventually. Musashi brings up the fact that one of the main reasons that he adopted Iori in the first place was because he saw his potential. As far as passing on his legacy, he's like the perfect blend between the new generation and his. And Musashi actually admits to the fact that he didn't adopt him out of compassion, not out of love, just to have a worthy opponent. That was his main reasoning. But as it turns out, Iori ended up growing on him quite a bit. First of all, that's a wild thing to admit to not only a child, but your child. It's one of those things where it's almost too transparent for its own good. You could point the finger and say that, oh, that's so self-centered. But if you look around and you just look at the world and life itself, a lot of people aren't supposed to be here. Like a lot of kids are accidents. A lot of parents just found out the mother was pregnant and they just ran with it. It wasn't intentional. They just ran with it. It's like, well, we're here now. Considering situations like that and how common that is, it's really not all that different. I will say that his decision and his direction is a little more premeditated. And then you have Musashi saying that his teachings offer him nothing but pain. And if it really came down to it, he would more than likely give them up to save the people that's around him. And then Musashi gives the notion that he passes away on screen. So this kind of revisits the idea that I was saying in the last trailer, Iori is going to have to figure out what he wants to do. Is he going to walk the path? of Musashi or is he going to eventually find his own way? I think him creating his own path is already in the works considering the fact that he has to deal with the Grail War in general. Musashi dealt with a lot of people but he ain't fighting no Grail War so that's already a million times different than anything that he's been through. Can't even speak to it. I just hope that he can keep his head on straight while he's doing so because he does show a lot of promise. One more thing that I did want to get into was another scene that I saw that featured Musashi. You have a scene where they have yet another run-in with Chiemon and Jalter. And this time you actually have Chiemon getting involved alongside her. And you can tell this is a little further because now you have Saber using his water elements to reinforce Iori, raising him up in the air to do these combo attacks in unison. You got Jalter summoning multiple phantom spears and shooting them off as projectiles, it's live. Then you have another cutscene 
out with him and Jalter and they are going in. I mean, she's using everything in her power to throw him off. Then all of a sudden in the middle of their fight, you see these huge snakes pop up all around them and now we're forced to deal with them in between. And then of course you have Assassin in the background actually fighting like an assassin. What a surprise. We see that he can extend this arm to reach off all the way across the field and hit Jalser. She actually had to deflect this with an energy wave. Then you have Musashi show up in the middle of us going against all these snakes and she says she's gonna do us a favor. She's gonna help us out. So she ends up being the one that goes up against Assassin in our stead. She corners Assassin and then they go off into a 1v1. Last person that Assassin wants to 1v1 against, I promise you. So yeah, he fights a lot different. Being that of the Assassin class, he's showcasing a lot of ninja S styles. He's teleporting. He has his snake summons. He has his poison that he can drown the field in. Likely it's just snake venom. And Musashi is just out here putting the work in pure slashes alone. He also has some type of ninja arts that's similar to what Ryder did earlier where they locked the entire field in purple. Assassin does something similar and it kind of forces Musashi away from him, but it's a lot shorter and it doesn't go nearly as far. He also can shoot the snake venom straight out of his hand if he directs it. We see him spraying this all across the field. Even though her attacks are straightforward, they look really good. I'm especially noticing this sort of sword trap that she can place her targets in where she hits you from all angles and you can tell a lot like Iori, she's using those same elements of Musashi as a part of her fighting style. She blasted Assassin with her Phantasm and he said, I don't want any more of this. I'm out of here. And the guy just smoke bombs. Another scene that I found hilarious was the introduction to Gil. We pull up on Gil at his shop, the main man himself, or should I say boss? Apparently he sent Iori and Saber on some type of errand to bring something back to him, more than likely just for the sake of doing so, knowing Gil. The dude outright says, why would I lift a finger to meddle in affairs that will resolve themselves? Is this the ruler y'all talking about? Ain't no way this dude a ruler. I just thought about how Gil acts. Unless he acts like his Babylonian counterpart, we're all screwed. This man is supposed to be mediating the war and he's just gonna help when he feels like it. <laughs> how funny would that be? He knows that he can help, he should be helping, and then he just looks around and he's like, you know what? I think I'm just not gonna do anything. <laughs> just, you guys look like you got it under control. I bid you good luck and have a nice day. Everybody would be so pissed. And then he starts to ask Iori his name. Now this is what really got me because he refers to Iori as an impoverished master. And I'm like, impoverished? impoverished that's a nice way of calling somebody broke bro this man really just called iori broke you there what's your name you broke motherfucker <laughs> like what nah this dude's trolling too hard already we are five minutes into the game and he's already overtly trolling us what is going on 